It definitely helps if there's two people for this. Uh, you know, one area of the side skirts that usually ends up getting trimmed out is this section right in here. Um, just the way that they come out of the molds, they don't always get them trimmed to exactly where you want. So the result there is, you know, the skirt sticks out quite a bit further than the molding. So I'm going to make note of that, that this whole edge in reality, you can see the line of where the skirt came out of the mold. So it should actually be trimmed along here. So I try and do this before I ship all these kits out. Um, just to make sure that you guys don't have to go through all of this or as much of this, you know, because each car is different. So I just kind of use my leg here. In this case, we'll lift this up and the most important is actually getting a piece of tape right on the inside of the door jam here We got the kit taped on so that you can have a good idea of the fitment. Um, again, you know, I'm going to trim down in these areas here to make sure they're good. But what you want to check for is this gap here, right at the opening where the door is. And you want to make sure that you have a good clearance all the way down along this ledge. And again here, you know, it's pretty close. Just want to make sure that that's not going to rub. So might have to uh, make sure on that one. And then this will give us the ability to, you know, look at our mounting points. So there'll be a screw here. There'll be another screw in here. And then there'll be a couple from the underside that we'll look at uh, doing as well. If you remember the GT that we did, uh, again, use some Christmas trees up on the underside of the rocker panel. You see behind me, I got the driver's side side skirt all mocked up and fitted on here. It's looking good. The only fasteners that I haven't done yet are the ones on the underside, but everything else is looking really good so far. Really happy with the way that it turned out. So I'm gonna go over to the passenger side now, show you guys how I got to this stage here. So here we are. Skirts are all taped on here just to make sure that they fit and checking all of the lines. If you remember on the driver's side, I did have to uh, grind a little bit of material out just from the way that it was cut out from the molds. No big deal. Um, so gonna go ahead, look these guys over, pop the wheels off because we are putting some screws in the fender wells and that's what actually holds the bulk of the side skirts on. And uh, from there, we'll pull the skirts off and then I will be fiberglassing in some of those custom little metal plates similar to the ones that I made for the rear bumper. We're going to do the same thing here that fit right underneath uh, this back section of the molding trim here. Just enough to keep this guy in place. It's not putting much pressure on there. It's just more to keep things in place and in position without having to rely on two-way tape, urethane, or any other adhesive. All right, so you can see here, there's actually a little void in the fiberglass up here. So that is gonna have to get fixed. And if you look really closely, you can see the line. So some of this needs to be shaved out just to make it not so thick underneath the molding. So we're gonna get that cleaned up. Obviously we're gonna have to fix up that little guy, but otherwise things are looking pretty good in terms of fitment here. You can see it's pretty close to the door here. So we just need to make sure that we have a little bit of adjustment for that, but I am going to go ahead and drill the hole to get the screw over here just so that we know we have our main mounting point ready to go. So 
it's a pretty long screw. I'm not going to screw it all the way in just because I actually just want to be able to make sure that everything is sitted and mounted the way that it is. We will use nice stainless hardware here in the end. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on the rear side and then just make notes of all the little areas that are going to get trimmed and uh, modified to make sure that this fits well. All right, so you can see we got this screw started in here and if you look really closely, you can see just a little bit of a stress crack right there. So that's gonna be important to grind into that and make sure that that gets repaired. In here, this is pretty thick, this edge here. The so same thing for this side. I've got these custom little plates. So I'm gonna get those fiberglassed on the back they're not going to stick up near as far as on that rear bumper one. Just enough to get a little bit underneath that molding there. And again, that's all it needs to do is just hold it and keep it in from pushing out like that. You see you got a couple of repairs going on here. This corner where that stress crack was, um, just getting that all sorted out. We got our little clip getting glassed here. Same thing over here and there was an error void in uh, the top side of this side skirt so that repair is being done as well we shaved down got the line all smoothed and uh, ready for install once we can get these few things cleaned up and uh, after that we'll be moving on to getting that front skirt mounted on the car so the one thing with the front skirt this fender extension here needs to come off so we're gonna have to get underneath the car we will go ahead and get this guy off. We'll get started on seeing what we need to do with this front bumper. All right guys, so I've pulled off the front fender extensions and there's a couple bolts here that hold these on. One of the studs actually, it, um, it was seized on, so that one snapped off. No big deal, but uh, you can see these two holes here. And then there's this plate on the inner side of the front bumper cover. So you have to get three nuts off there and then this whole piece will remove itself. So the important part on why this piece needs to come out is simply because the thickness of the top right here that sits underneath this molding is it pretty much sits flush. And if you haven't noticed it, take a look at your car and you will notice that the molding to this extension is flush. So that means that if we were to put the outer edge of this skirt up against here it's going to be sticking out from the molding here and it's something that we don't want and as soon as you go forward to the front bumper cover there is a ridge here and that's what we want because the skirt is going to fit flush and butt up against the bottom side of the molding here so that is the reason why we are taking this guy off so go ahead and place the front skirt on now get it mocked up make sure everything is fitting good make any of the necessary you know tweaks or sanding to it and uh, see how we want to go ahead and potentially find some neat ways of fastening this guy up without having to, again, use any urethane or any drilling into the bumper. All right, so I finished grinding out some of the key areas that I had marked out that were a little bit bulky. Uh, one of those key areas being right here where it transitions from the molding to the fender extension that we took off. So that way it'll just kind of give that nice little tucked up uh, look right underneath that edge where it meets here. So that was one key area. Then there was a few spots just up and along here where the skirt would have come out of the mold. So you really want to make sure that, you know, you get everything nice and smooth and you find any of those spots that are giving you a little bit of trouble when you're doing your mock-up because these are fiberglass, they come out of molds. They're not 100%. They are really, really good, but they still need those final little tweaks if you want that perfect fit and finish, especially when we're not molding anything right into the moldings here. So we want to have that flush, nice straight line and factory look. gonna lie I have been struggling a little bit I've had the camera off because I've been moving things around trying different things trying to get this to fit and look right and again trying not to have to drill or use any permanent types of adhesives or any of that you know we got everything 
fitted really nice along the side here. Did a little repair here where there was a crack just from the stress and all these little things. You wanna make sure that you get these taken care of beforehand, uh, especially in this case where I'm most likely gonna paint the kit off the car and then install the kit once it's painted. Uh, that's for a few reasons. Number one, it's actually easier to paint the kit and get all the covering on the underside um, if you have the kit flipped upside down. Number two, you don't want to get a bunch of dirt and debris. You know, that's from the shop floor or anything. As much as you try and clean stuff up, you're always going to stir up some dust. So it'll just be a better way to, uh, to get this thing painted separately. Don't have to worry about overspray on the car or masking or any of that type of stuff. So those are a few of the advantages for that. So this car being a Canadian car had a front license plate mount on it here. You can see the two holes are there. Um, you know, the owner of the car hasn't decided if he wants me to fill those and try and blow some of that in or if he's just gonna, you know, put little plastic plugs there and paint them white. But with that said, there's two holes on the underside that hold the plate bracket in place, and I am going to utilize those holes. There we go. All right, so here's the underside of the front skirt, and what I managed to come up with and this took some time, uh, not gonna lie. Uh, I was uh, trying multiple different things and you know, originally I wanted to see if there was a way of utilizing the front fender extension um, side pieces, but what I came up with were these two holes on the underside here in the factory bumper is where the license plate bracket went. So it screws up from the underside here normally and then goes in on the top here. So what these little brackets do is they actually allow the front skirt to wedge itself in between the bracket and the factory front bumper. So these little screws here are actually going, you know, through the bumper, the back one through the factory hole from the license plate bracket. Uh, the front one is a drilled hole. Both of these guys are going through the bumper, holding the bumper up into the bumper rebar support. Uh, that gives it extra structure and rigidity. And then the front skirt is wedged just by pressure between this little plate and the original front bumper cover, which allows us to get this nice line um, between the bumper and... So that what that does is that gives us the nice line between the front skirt and the front bumper. Uh, I have drilled new holes here for that bumper bracket so we can still manage to just kind of relocate where the front license plate uh, should the owner want to reinstall it. That way where uh, the bracket used to bolt back here, it's just gonna go through here. Um, you could actually use a Christmas tree clip or something else as well, um, just to, you know, it doesn't need much here. So here we are guys, day three-ish working on the 1990 coupe and I have the kit sitting, fitting, all the little tweaks necessary to have this thing look really nice on the car when it's all done. So I'm gonna go around, gonna show you guys some of the things that I did in order to retain as much of the factory, um, I guess, location of things, reusing uh, push clip holes, reusing certain screw holes, everything else. Um, there are a few places I had to drill, uh, but they are not in open and exposed areas. Um, you know, like I said, every time I do one of these kits, depending on the requirement, things are a little bit different. So, you know, the little slide plates that go up behind the moldings, those worked out really well. And I'm gonna show you guys what I did in the front and rear bumpers here. Um, as well, but to sort of start things off you guys can see here You know on the front skirt on the inner fender well here. This is a hole that needed to get drilled This is actually retaining the factory location of the fender where it screws into the inner fender. So uh, These aren't tight. This is just a final mock-up guys. So um, Got these two screws here. There was a little bit of a stress crack here from stretching and maneuvering things um, so just some short strand fiberglass on there is getting set up, but you can see the line here is nice and tight We took off that front fender extension 
so that, that way this is a nice flush fit right here. Moving on to the side skirt here, same thing. We retained uh, one of the factory screw hole locations here for the inner fender. The screw got drilled here. Had to do quite a bit of work on the top side of this skirt here, uh, just because something when these kits were made back in the day, this guy sits a little short. And if you try and stuff it up against that molding, well, you're gonna run into an issue down here where your door is going to lightly scrape against the skirt. So I just kind of built this up a little bit. Wasn't that big of a deal, you know? And again, it really depends on which direction you're going with this kit. If you're just going for the butt up method, trying to keep things, you know, kind of as factory as possible, you're gonna have to build up some material here. If you're wanting to mold the kit in, where you're you know, attaching the body kit right into the moldings and you're urethane and everything on, well then it wouldn't matter because everything is gonna get molded and slicked anyways. So you can see how rigid that side skirt is. I'm putting a good amount of force on there and it's not moving. So uh, we have a little slide plate that goes underneath the molding here just to keep things nice in place. So nice and tight and snug up against the fender here. Same thing back here. I did a little bit of trimming right here just to make sure that this is nice and smooth with the edge. You still need to do just a little bit of light sanding there. And on the back side of the side skirt, both these holes are drilled. Um, but that gives it, again, extra rigidity. Nothing needs to be done on the underside here. So it was kind of a toss up, you know, do I put an extra hole in here and try, or versus do I, um, you know, just use one screw and then find ways of fastening th from the bottom. So I opted for this, just avoids having to drill or come up with any uh, weird brackets that might need to be done on the underside. So. This was the easier route here. Still gonna look super nice and clean, you know, when the hardware is all painted up and everything else. So the rear bumper, still one cut left to do. And you'll notice on the other skirts, I've already done this. Um, just trying to make sure that the contour of everything lines up with the actual um, in inside fender wells. So I'll be grinding this down, cleaning that up. Only one screw hole was drilled here and if you remember, we have our custom little brackets that slide underneath this molding, holding this side nice and flush. And then on the underside, I'm gonna show you guys what I did in terms of brackets. So here's the underside of the rear bumper. And you can see there are two brackets. It's hard to get the camera up in here, so my apologies for that. So I just bent some uh, steel plate there which uh, you guys might have seen me doing earlier in the video. So that those bent up brackets are bolted in to factory locations of where the little Christmas tree push clips were. So those guys, they're just little C brackets bolted up in there. And then just some little push clips here. Uh, these are a two piece push clip. I'm going to make sure that I use something more factory and flush. They'll get painted as well, and you won't even see those because they're hiding on the underside of the bumper. What those brackets do, again, this gives good rigidity to the rear skirt and makes sure that we have a nice flush line here between the skirt and the molding. Now, there will be a little bit of two-way tape that's gonna go on the back side here just to make sure that, um, number one, we have um, a good seal. Number two, it's going to make sure that just any vibration um, or anything like that, because we don't want to scratch any of the paint on the back side of the lower part of this bumper, should we want to take it off in the future. So down along the driver's side, you can see everything is pretty much the same in terms of the way that things have been mounted and secured. Got a little stress crack here that's getting fiberglassed up. Again here you can kind of see how used and reshaped the skirt and given a little bit of a contour um, here where it goes out so it can reuse that factory location here. And again, that guy was drilled. So now it's time to pull everything off guys and go through the last little touch up and preparatory stages. 
and get this kit ready for primer. I am going to be using a white primer. Since the car is white, just everything is going to work really well here. Since the gel coat is white, the primer will be white and then the paint will be white. So if there are stone chips or anything else, at least it's not going to be a different color when it chips, unless for whatever reason it goes straight through that gel coat right into the fiberglass, hoping none of that happens. So that's it. I'm going to pull this guy off and uh, get everything prepped up and hopefully it'll be primed today and uh, we'll be spraying some paint here before the end of the week.